Hello and welcome to Awaken the Truth Within with Zoe Gold. Today we're going to talk about clarifications, about um, the power of the mind, because you've heard a lot about it. And uh, there could be some misperceptions, misinterpretations that often keep you, keep you stuck. And also, because you've heard uh, on multiple occasions, for example, from the famous quote of Napoleon Hill, whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. The thing is, what really stands behind that quote? What kind of mind? What does it actually mean to believe? Beyond the uh, concepts that you already know, beyond the concepts that just go around. And there is a phrase also saying that um, when you know the truth, the problem ceases to be. So if there is still the problem, that means that you're not looking at the truth or you do not see the complete picture of whatever you're looking at and the knowledge, um, um, understanding or perception about the particular thing. And also another thing is um, the power of you, right? Um, you've heard it before that you're powerful, that you are perfect, that you can create anything that you want, you can transform your life. But again, what stands behind it? And who is that you who is powerful? Because many people still live in problems, challenges, lack, even though they know they're powerful. So let's take a deeper look at these ideas, at these concepts and ideas, and get clarifications. Well, let's start with um, your power, right? The power to create whatever you want, the power to transform your life, your results, etc. There is a surface eye, the surface identity, and there is a deeper eye, a deeper identity a deeper level to who you truly are. The surface eye, you, it's often full of errors, conditioning, misperceptions, beliefs, data. You can also call it ego. Um, that's not the real you, stuff that you learned throughout your physical path, your worldly identity, or in other words, your surface identity. That is often very limiting um, and operates from a lot of errors, misunderstanding, misconceptions, misperceptions, right? And there is this deeper you, the real one. And there is no separation there. I don't want you to think about it like there's two me or something like that. The real one is you. And the surface identity, the ego, is just beliefs. It's just your perception about who you are. When you look at yourself, you know, like from... from from the side, from the eyes of people you know, from the eyes of society, your image of yourself. 
And there is the real you. The real you that has the depth that sometimes you felt the glimpses of it, but often you don't even know the greatness, the beauty, the power, the joy of it. So that deep eye and connection to the deeper level, to the real within you, awakening it, tapping into it, living from it, connecting with the infinite presence almighty in you, feeling the presence of the divine, of the creator in you, because you are part of the whole. You're made of it. That's who you truly are. That you, the true identity, is unlimited, is powerful, is magnificent, because it is an alignment with the source of everything there is, with infinite intelligence, with God, with infinite presence almighty. It's part of that. And that's where the true creation comes from. That's when the true inspiration, true beauty, true wisdom, a knowing knowledge comes from. Knowing. Knowing who you are. Not believing, because beliefs, beliefs are things and This is the level of ego, of surface identity, of this worldly identity, false identity. But we are going deeper, not changing beliefs, data with another data, a little bit better data, a little bit upgraded data, but going deeper, going to the root, going to your essence, going to the knowing that is there that has always been there, that will always be there, that knowing about who you are, about your abilities, about your abundance, about your greatness, about your um, wisdom, your inspiration, the knowing, knowing of your greatness, And you can choose whether you want to think thoughts and be involved with the beliefs of the surface identity or tap into the knowing that comes from the divine, that comes from the source, that is who you are, that is your essence. And that leads us to another part that we started with, the power of the mind, right? Whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. What kind of mind? The human mind? The surface I? And again, I don't want you to think there are two minds or anything like that. There is no separation. There is a perception of a separation, maybe, but there is only one mind, the mind, right? And the human mind is just a a concept. In other words, you can call it ego, you can call it errors, beliefs, um, a false idea in consciousness, um, conditioning, etc., right? So, whatever the mind can, can conceive and believe it can achieve, what kind of mind? The human mind? The surface identity or the real one in you, the infinite one in you, the depth in you, the depth of your being, of who you are, the depth of your soul, the depth of source of everything there is, the infinite presence almighty. That's where the power comes from. That's where it is. That's where the true creation comes from. And that is the mind. 
And when you operate from that mind, you tap into knowing, the divine knowing, the truth. And that's where the certainty comes from. The divine certainty about you, about your worthiness, about your abilities, about where you are now. So the present moment is not just the means to an end. You are not just going through life hoping that this will pass, this will pass, this will pass. And somewhere in the future, there is that thing that you really, really want that awaits you. This is wasting life and not giving, uh, how to say it better, because life is just now. And now, and now, and now, and this infinite present moment. And often, you don't like it. You push against it. Many people are often against the present moment. They try to escape it. They try to run away. They try to get somewhere where they think they will feel better, achieve something, or get there. And... They disregard the life that is happening now. They don't give attention, love, appreciation to it because they always try to get somewhere and they make this moment just the means to get somewhere where they want to go, where they want to get, where they believe they will feel better, think better, be better. And while on the surface level, right, the, the, the person that lives in this physical reality, there, is, there are things to learn and to grow and to become and to uh, maybe even achieve. There is nothing bad in that. But the thing is, where do your goals come from? Are they coming from your ego desires or they are coming from the depth of who you truly are? Right? And also, um, when you operate, when you act, when you do things, do you come from that deeper level? Do you give your love and attention to the present moment and what you do in the present moment? Or you give all your attention and desires to the end result? And when you fo are focused only on the end result, that creates frustration and stress and all the unpleasant feelings that people often feel when they work towards that realization of that goal, of that desire, of that thing that they want. So coming back to, we talked about the mind and that phrase, whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. And let's talk about belief, right? So what often happens is you heard about believing and feeling one with it, feeling aligned with the good that you desire, which is a great concept. But how to actually do it when everything, like your physical senses, your physical kind of reality shows you that this is not... Um, how it is and you try to fight it you try to imagine something visualize something which could be great practices but often you open your eyes you look at your bank account and like I'm lying to myself something within you is fighting it right but when you tap into the knowing in you that certainty in you that comes from your core, that comes from your essence. You don't need to change the beliefs. You just know. You are. And that leads me to another point. So we talked about the surface identity, right? Where you can change and grow and become, but at the at the deeper identity, at the deeper level of you, you already are everything you've ever wanted to be. You are already full and complete and magnificent and great and more than worthy. There is nothing to be added there. 
So the the question is, why do you want to achieve the goals that you want, coming back to desires of ego or true desires of your heart? Why do you want to achieve that thing that you want? And I know you heard about why, but I want you to look at why from different perspective at this point. Do you believe that by achieving that, you will become more worthy and you will derive your sense of identity from that achievement? That you can finally relax and appreciate yourself. That you can finally say, okay, I am able, I'm worthy. That other people will look at you with appreciation, with admiration, finally, right? Are those the reasons? So that shows that you are coming from the wrong um, place about it because you already are. You don't need to prove anything. You don't need to achieve anything in order to feel that worthiness or be who you truly are. When you try to get somewhere, so finally that thing will somehow give you the sense of the identity that you want, that finally you're, I don't know, wealthy, respected, um, able, um, worthy, etc. That means that you are coming from the false premise and maybe that is even the reason why you cannot get there because first you got to understand the truth about you. Not because the world around you shows you that but because you know and you tap into that knowing when you are at connection and oneness when you are I am oneness when you feel the presence when you are it when you feel the presence of source within you when you feel the presence the infinite presence almighty with you when the knowing is born in you you awaken it. You remind yourself of it because it's always there. You can just cover it with some conditioning of the surface stuff. But this is just the surface stuff. At the depth of your being, your magnificence is given. It is. And when you come from that, you come from fullness. And when you create, you create from fullness. When you create, you create from who you really are and you create from the mind, the real creation. And you create not because you want to create, because you want to prove something or achieve something or become somebody or feel better. But you create because it's your calling. Because something within you feels that it wants to be born to see this world, to bring the benefit to you and others. You create because this is your nature, because you create and co-create with creator of everything there is. And that's the only reason for creation, not because you need it or you want to escape the harsh reality or you want to make sure that everybody appreciates you or you finally start appreciating yourself or seeing your worthiness and stop the suffering and struggle right? You tap into love, to that presence, to that knowing, to that certainty. And you operate from fullness and greatness of who you truly are, because that is the real you. I hope this was help helpful, and I will talk to you uh, soon. Have a great day. Bye.